Welcome into the 11th edition of the Stingray Scoop, everybody. I'm Stephen Ray, and on today's episode, we are going to talk about the breaking news down at LSU. We're also going to talk a little WWE news, and also we're going to touch on the Najee Harris's performance last night at Pittsburgh. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we get you primed and ready on all of the news around the sports world this week here only on the Stingray Scoop. Inside another edition of the Stingray Scoop, everybody. I am your host, Stephen Ray, and we did have a little bit of breaking news out of the LSU Tigers the other day. As let me go on ahead real quick and pop this up here, and then we will get into it. Miles Brennan, the quarterback of LSU broke his arm, and looks like he will be out a pretty good while for LSU this season. So what I'm going to do now is we have an LSU reporter that is nice enough to join us right now here on The Scoop. So without further ado, here is Preston Guy, who is a reporter for TigerBait.com to give us the latest information on what's going on down at LSU. Preston, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, Stephen. How's it going? Good, man. How about you? Uh, you know, just uh, catching a little time here. I'm actually out traveling for business right now, so okay. it's nice to break away from all this all this talk and, talk, you know, break yes. down a little uh, – an unfortunate situation, but nonetheless, it is nice to actually be talking about football. Yes. Well, can you go on ahead real quick and tell us what happened with Miles Brennan and what you feel like is going to be the outlook for him moving forward. Yeah, so it's uh, unfortunately both answers are going to be just very unfortunate. Um, okay. He was on a family fishing trip and he fractured his left on his non-throwing arm. So I'll start okay. off with the silver lining. That, that right-handed rocket he's got is going to be intact one day. Now, right. it's an injury where above the shoulders you have to question how broken is he over this because a lot of guys get a bunch of injuries. We saw Andrew Luck. He just called it quits. He was so hurt and broken and had been through so much. And yes. you look at a guy like the emotional roller coaster that Miles Brennan has had to endure during his five years at LSU. Yeah. It's up there. I mean, it's rough. And he's got two years left to play college football you know, if he can invest himself into that, which is going to take a lot to rebound yes. from. So physically, he certainly has all the tools and everything in place to be able to make a bounce back. Now, the next question is, where would that bounce back be? Because yes. now, I mean, it was a pretty tight competition. I, I did your, your preview show and I told you, I think the job is Max Johnson's. I think yes. it was neck and neck, according to Coach O and – I think Max, you know, with his just just really football IQ and ability to move and work with the offense more so than just throwing the ball, I think that that was always going to put him over the top. Yes. Um, now you, you have to look, okay, if he's going to be the starter and he has a successful go at it, does Miles come back, back in a situation where it's, it's very hard to unseat a starter? 
or does he love LSU? I mean, he's from New Orleans originally. His parents own a very famous restaurant down, down in New Orleans. And maybe he just wants to stick around LSU. I've heard a lot of rumors about that, that hadn't won the starter job. He might have just stuck around LSU just because it was his dream to play at LSU. So his future oh, yes. is certainly uh, being questioned now. Um, and the earliest recovery we would be talking about would be probably about 12 weeks from what I'm understanding. And that would put him coming back for the Bama game, which yes. in a scenario where Matt Johnson got hurt and you have to turn to true freshman Garrett Nussmeyer, that could <laughs> be incredibly valuable. Although Nussmeyer is a talented true freshman, there's just, it's very rare. And I mean, like it's generationally rare that you find a true freshman 18 years old was going to prom a few months ago that can come in and play high quality sec football you see true sophomores you'll see sometimes red shirt freshmen burst onto the scene Uh, and a lot of times they're just freak athletes which nussmeyer is not a freak athlete he's a very gifted thrower very accurate passer very smart player but he's not going to be 6'6 250 like cam newton out there i mean he's on some weight and in spring game, it was very clear that he was the fourth option behind T.J. Finley, uh, behind Miles Brennan, and behind Max Johnson. Right. Um, so th- that could be useful for LSU. However, I would not anticipate seeing Miles Brennan playing for LSU this year. Right. Well, let me just go in and ask this then. With the departure of T.J. Finley to Auburn, is the quarterback position now a major depth issue for LSU? Oh, there's no doubt. Okay. There's no doubt. And it is, it's one of the, it's a bizarre scenario because you think about it in that spring football game, we all left and said, man, all four of those guys can play ball if you need them to. Yes. And you felt really good about the depth. In fact, that might've been the best depth I had ever seen at LSU in the quarterback right. room. Um, in terms of quality depth, I mean, there's been some times where they've had a bunch of guys, but it, you could really tell not one of them could could really, you know, lead that team. This was a really good quarterback room. Yes. Well, T.J. Finley, of course, made a best decision for himself, and I don't think anybody would really blame him seeing that, you know, the writing on the wall. Wow. Um, and then you lose your Miles Brennan, and all of a sudden you went from an absolutely stacked room to, man – you better put Mike Johnson in some bubble wrap. Yes. Fortunately, you have been recruiting at a high level. So you got guys like a talented freshman, Garrett Nussmeyer. And then I'm sure they're going to be looking to the transfer portal to see if there's a somewhat experienced player available to come in and provide some immediate depth. Because nowadays, the landscape of college football, we do see a little bit more of that going on. I'm sorry about that, Ray. I'm, I'm in public right now. So You're fine, man. Happens. Um, but anyways, uh, so I would I would say they'd probably be looking for a, 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 a talented walk-on type guy, because behind us, Meyer, you're looking at straight walk-ons. I got you. Well, man, look, I know you're busy, so I'm going to let you go back to doing what you do, but yeah. uh, I really do appreciate you joining us, man. Of course, Stephen. You have a great day, man. You too, but thank you. All right. All right, guys. Well, once again, that was Preston Guy from TigerBait.com down there in Baton Rouge to talk all about the Miles Brennan situation. And once again, if you just joined us late, Miles Brennan broke his arm during a freak accident while preparing to go fishing this past week. And so he will be out for a majority of the season. And, you know, like Preston said, he very well could be uh, back close to the Alabama game. But then, of course, there are some big games on the schedule for LSU before we get to the Alabama game, including one where they go across the country to take on an up-and-coming UCLA team out in Pasadena. So now that is going to be a rather interesting storyline to, tra- to uh, keep track of 
there in Baton Rouge as we move closer to the season and during the season to test that depth of the quarterback position down there at LSU. And one more note, our thoughts and prayers are definitely with Miles Brennan for a fast and speedy recovery. Now, another big topic today was the pouring, outpouring of support for Najee Harris because he made his NFL debut last night with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Hall of Fame game against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I did want to mention that none of these starters for Dallas actually made the trip there. Dak did not play and some other players as well, but it was a good night for Mr. Najee Harris up there in the uh, Hall of Fame game simply because he did everything that Mike Tomlin, the Pittsburgh coach, wanted to see. And he actually thought that he showed some things that he's been showing us in practice settings. And that's all really what you can look for during the preseason. And that's exactly what Mike Tomlin said word for word on the NFL Network right after the game. So congratulations to Najee Harris for making a big time impact last night and his his future in the NFL definitely looks to be a positive one and who knows eventually he could become or even surpass Derrick Henry at the level there in the NFL but I still think that Derrick Henry is king right now at the running back position they're in the NFL. Now, staying with the NFL, Robert Griffin III, the former Baylor player who played under Art Bryles, is joining the ESPN, uh, ESPN company with the NFL, and he is going to be an NFL and college football analyst, but he still does want to play football at some other time, and maybe just hope Hopefully, Robert Griffin III can do what Tim Tebow has done, broadcast for a few years, and then, hey, the Jacksonville Jaguars called Tebow. Maybe some other team will call Robert Griffin III a little bit later on, but you will not see Robert Griffin III on the field this year. He will be an analyst in the booth there at ESPN. So, we also have some college football news, and Steve Sarkeesian said that the bullseye just got a lot bigger for the Texas Longhorns as they move into the SEC. And the reason that he took the job was because he wanted to take Texas to the next level, but especially with them joining the best conference in America and the best conference in college football, you know that the eyes are going to definitely be on the Longhorns and the Sooners this year for to see how well they perform, knowing that in 2025 they are going to the SEC. And because of the SEC and Greg Sankey getting Oklahoma and Texas the commissioner has now extended his contract in the SEC to remain the commissioner through 2026. So congratulations, Mr. Sankey, on getting that extension through 2026 to be our commissioner of the good, big, bad SEC, my friend. That is awesome. All right, and I've got a couple more notes that I want to throw out at you now. Here are uh, some big-time information down in Florida. And there is a new spike in the cases of the virus down there in the state of Florida. To combat that, the Florida Gators are going to spend 
part of their training camp in hotels and together as a team and not venture out as much due to them trying to combat the virus. Because if you will remember, Florida was hit majorly last year and actually had a lot of games postponed due to the virus down there in the state of Florida. So they're going to go on ahead and get ahead of that and basically spend a good portion of training camp in their hotels and together as a team so they won't have that much of contact tracing with the virus down there in the state of Florida. So that is a big, big issue to look forward to and track for the remainder of this off season and then of course as we start football in about 22 days from now. Now, now let's move because you see back here I've got a little bit of wrestling stuff. I've got the wrestling belt and of course the trendy WrestleMania shirt. And you know, I did realize I've, I've done some, some looking here and on the Facebook page a lot of our followers here and watchers of the CTS. They are wrestling fans, so we are going to provide you with more wrestling content. And so here is a big one out of the WWE, and unfortunately the layoffs and the uh, them not being able to keep talent continues as WWE legend Ric Flair is leaving the WWE because unfortunately they do not see eye to eye. So that is very unfortunate there for the WWE as they are trying to keep the ratings going against AEW, which is really uh, kicking their tail right now as they are picking up a bunch of former WWE superstars. I know that Chris Jericho is on All Elite Wrestling, and the Big Show is also over there, and so they may actually get Mr. Ric Flair, Mr. Woo, as well. And unfortunately, once again, they have released Bray Wyatt at earlier this week in the WWE, and Bray Wyatt may actually move over to the uh, AEW as well. And oddly enough, he was, Bray Wyatt was cleared uh, to wrestle before the WWE released him. If you will remember when he faced Randy Orton at the last pay-per-view, he suffered a concussion. However, they cleared him and then for some odd reason after clearing him, they released him from the company. So that is huge news right there in the WWE. Ric Flair leaves the company because they don't see eye to eye, and then they lay off Bray Wyatt during this week. So two huge losses for the WWE. And to make matters worse, one more final note about the WWE. Ronda Rousey slams the WWE fans as ungrateful idiots. I didn't say that. She did in a tweet because of Bray Wyatt's release. And she feels like that it is due to the fans not respecting him, not chanting his name, and so she is really PO'd at the WWE fans because of the Bray Wyatt being released. She feels like that it is a WWE Universe issue because you guys did not respect him as a wrestler. Now, that's not my words. Those are her words verbatim. Uh, so that is what's going on in the world of WWE. And right now, this has not been a good week for Vince McMahon and the WWE as they lost woo, Ric Flair. They lost Bray Wyatt and 
they made Ronda Rousey mad. So hopefully, hopefully next week will be better if you are a wrestling fan there in the WWE. So I've got one more final note to pass along right here on uh, the Stingray Scoop. We here at the CTS are very, very excited and happy to announce that this is coming up right now. We just created this a couple of nights ago. So if you are on the popular, as always, trendy TikTok, make sure you check out this. Check out my new channel on TikTok. The CTS Interview Room. So once again, if you are there on TikTok, make sure you follow us for all of the latest information and so please as we get you ready for all of the great shows right here only on the Stingray Show. Guys, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will be right back here on social media, on the CTS next week with another thing race game. I had to think about it just for a second how I um, I wanted to also uh, I lost my train of thought but I also wanted to say that uh, you can also follow uh, our show, my other show right here on the CTS and it's called Third and Three and we usually put this out every Thursday. Show that myself and Joey Lozada and Clemson Tom do right here on the CTS, and it is very informative, it is very argumentative, and it is a lot of fun between Joey and Clemson Tom fighting back and forth and debating college football topics and sports topics as that, and there's even a couple of shows in there where we did wrestling topics as well. So guys, I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your Friday afternoon, wonderful weekend, and I will see you guys right back here on the CTS next Friday, right here. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and as always, from all of us here at the CTS, God bless.